you would take your copy of God's Word. Journey with me, if you please. Romans chapter number 11. Look with me briefly at verses 25 through 32. Romans chapter number 11. Verses 25 through 32. Sermon the subject, thank God for Israel. Last Sunday I preached a sermon titled Thank God for Israel, but I didn't tell you that, that was that. That was part one of at least the two sermon series on the same subject, Thank God for Israel. Last week was Romans chapter 11. This week, we're taking a look at Romans chapter 11, verses 25 through 32. And God willing, we'll milk one more sermon out of this 11th chapter before we move on to some of the good stuff. Trust that if one has it, the word about God reads like this. I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery, so that you will not be wise in your own estimation, that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved just as it is written. Deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. From the standpoint of the gospel, they, reference to Israel, are enemies for your, a reference to you and I, say. From the standpoint of God's choice, they, Israel, are beloved for the sake of their fathers. For the gifts in the calling of God, I love this, are irrevocable. <laughs> You'll get to shout right there sooner than later, trust me. But just as you once were disobedient to God, but now have been shown mercy because of their disobedience, so these also now have been disobedient that because of the mercy shown to you, they also may now be shown mercy. For God has shut up all in disobedience so that he may show mercy to all. For God has shut up all in disobedience so that purpose connecting word he may show mercy to all. And I'm trying not to work hard this morning, but it's going to be a rough one, I can tell already. For God has shut up everybody in disobedience for the purpose that he might show you mercy. I want to preach this morning from the subject, thank God for Israel. You may have the seats. Thank you very much, Usher. You're certainly too kind. Thank God for Israel. Part two, if you will. Thank God for Israel. Part two. I don't know what the problem is this morning, but I hope y'all can deal with it before it's all over. Thank God. Thank God for Israel. Thank um, God for Israel. On a form 
near Rome, there were two teenagers who had been friends since preschool, playing around a 3,000 pound tractor that was sitting on bricks. Two teenagers who had been friends since preschool found themselves playing around a 3,000 pound tractor that was sitting on bricks. For whatever reason, as the two teenagers were playing, one of the teenagers decided that it was wise for him to crawl underneath a 3,000 pound tractor that was sitting on bricks. As he crawled underneath this 3,000 pound tractor sitting on bricks, his long-term friend thought that it was also wise that he pursue his friend. As he pursued his friend in crawling under this 3,000 pound tractor that was sitting on bricks, he accidentally kicked one of the bricks, causing this 3,000 pound tractor to fall on his long-term friend. When the tractor fell on his friend and he began to hear his long-term friend, whom he had been friends with since preschool, when he began to hear his friend lift his voice in great pain, the older of the teenagers running on pure adrenaline grabbed that 3,000 pound tractor and miraculously lifted that 3,000 pound tractor from off his friend. As his friend wiggled his way from underneath that tractor, immediately, hear me, immediately when his friend was free from danger, the boy dropped the tractor you didn't get it, let's go over it again. <laughs> the boy is running on pure adrenaline because his friend whom he loves, his friend whom he is devoted to is stuck under something that has the power to kill him. us 
we learned a couple of weeks ago, so that we would provoke Israel to jealousy. Once Israel is provoked to jealousy, God would have fulfilled his purpose with us, which is to bring Israel back to himself. But here's why you should thank God for Israel, because if it wasn't for Israel's disobedience, God would have had no reason to save you. Thank God for Israel. Yeah. The question has to be raised. Why should you thank God for Israel? Here, in our selected text, the Holy Spirit makes known to us why it is that both you and I should thank God for Israel. Are you interested? First, you should thank God for Israel because God will deliver Israel from judgment. All right. yeah. You should thank God for Israel because God will deliver Israel from judgment. Your gracious with your presence on last week, you would have heard me preach a sermon from the same subject, thank God for Israel. It was inside that little sermon that the question was raised, why should you and I refrain from exalting ourselves above Israel? It was therein that we learned that both you and I should refrain from exalting ourselves above Israel because salvation still belongs to Israel. But not only did we learn that both you and I should refrain from exalting ourselves above Israel because salvation still belongs to Israel, but we learned that we should refrain from exalting ourselves above Israel because salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ. Not only did we learn that we should refrain from exalting ourselves above Israel because salvation still belongs to Israel and because salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ, but we learned that we should refrain from exalting ourselves above Israel ultimately because God will save Israel. And it was based on that argument that Paul transitions into Romans chapter 11, particularly verses 25, 26, and 27 by expressing his confidence that God will deliver Israel. Yes, he will. God will deliver Israel. The church is not a replacement of Israel. The church is not a new Israel. The church is the means by which God wants to deliver Israel. God will deliver Israel. Paul yeah. yeah. right. says him, for I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed. I'm merely trying to do what Paul tried to do in the Roman church, and that is, I don't want you to be, you King James lovers say, I want you to be ignorant. I'm sorry, that was bad ebonics. I don't want you to be ignorant. I do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about this, Paul says, mystery. Mystery is a technical term. I don't have time to linger there because I'll be there all day. And no, that's no pulpit excuse for poor exposition. That's just the truth. Because the Greek word for mystery here does not communicate clearly or precisely or accurately what Paul was trying to say. The word mystery here is a pagan word. Paul is speaking to the Romans which were primarily Gentiles. So the Greek way for using the word mystery, mystery was slightly different from the way a pagan would have used the word mystery. Or mystery here simply refers to that which is 
hard to understand. From a Greek perspective, the word mystery would, would mean that which is impossible to understand. Paul is not saying that this mystery is impossible to understand. He is simply saying it is very difficult to understand. But for those whom God has filled with his spirit are able to understand. And it's the understanding of this, what Paul calls a mystery, that it helps us to understand why we are saved. Because when we understand why we are saved, we won't walk around like we are saved because we are lovable. But we'll walk around like we were saved because God is loving. Paul says, I don't want you to be uninformed about this mystery. What mystery are you talking about, Paul? The mystery that Paul is talking about here is in reference to the salvation of Israel. If God has now instituted the church, then what is his plan for Israel? Paul says, I don't want you to be uninformed God has a plan for Israel. And don't go to sleep on this sermon because God's plan for Israel has a lot to do with you and me. So if you miss God's plan for Israel, you miss God's plan for you. That's a good place to pause right now and lift up my voice and say the reason that many of us miss out on blessings is because we disregard the people that God wants to save. Okay, okay. the reason we can't get far along in what God has called us to do is because we don't want to minister to people that don't look like us. We don't want to minister to people who don't dress like us or, or talk like us. But if we do what God has called us to do, God will fulfill what he wants to fulfill right here at this place. Paul says God has a plan for Israel. And I don't want you to be uninformed about it. I don't want you to be I don't want you to walk around not knowing. I want you to be well informed. I, I, I want you to be accurately informed. I don't want you to be uninformed about this mystery. What mystery are you talking about, Paul? Paul says the mystery is the partial pardoning of Israel partial pardoning that has happened unto Israel. Get that temporal connecting word unto. Yeah. Did you see it in your Bible? Yes, I don't want you to be uninformed about <coughs> the hardening of Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. The fullness of the Gentiles has come in. The word fullness here comes from a Greek word that simply means completeness. It simply means a specific amount. Paul's suggestion here is that God has a sovereign number that only he knows about. For Gentiles to be saved. And once God has saved every Gentile that he wants to save, then he will institute his plan for Israel. I, I didn't make that up. That's right here in your Bible. Paul says, until the fullness of the Gentiles have come in, God has a sovereign number of people that he wants to save. And once he reaches that number, he will institute his plan for Israel. Y'all don't really know when to shout, do you? Well, let, 
let me help you shout. If God has a sovereign number that he only knows, and then once that number is fulfilled, he will institute his plan for Israel, you should be excited that God took the time to save you before he instituted it. He institutes his plan. Okay. I, I'm excited because God could have bypassed me and, and looked over me and saved somebody else and then saved Israel. But God took the time to save little old me. He gives us time every morning, every time our eyes open, every time we walk around, we got a chance to get right with God before he institutes his plan for Israel. But some of us will go miss the boat. So some of us will go miss the boat. You know why? Because we are not taking advantage of our time. We are not taking advantage of our time. We spend our time being mad and angry at the world about something we ain't got no reason to be mad about. We spend our time doing all kind of other stuff instead of spending our time trying to get right with God. Paul says, until. That's what we call a temporal connecting word that deals with time, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, you and I are operating on laurel time. Are you using your time wisely? Paul says, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and so all Israel will be saved. To validate his claim about Israel's salvation. Paul quotes Isaiah 59 verses 20 and 21. Paul says, the deliverer, reference there is to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Hebrews would have understood it simply as the Messiah, the Christ, the one who was going to come and free them from the bondage of sin. When the deliverer will come to Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. Did you get that? When the deliverer will come to Zion. Zion is a synonym to Jerusalem. The millennial kingdom will be established in Jerusalem. Paul says, when the deliverer comes, he will remove ungodliness from Jacob. He will do this. Why will he do it? Verse 27 says, because this is my covenant with them. I'm trying to teach you when to get happy. And this is a good place to learn when to get happy. Because God will deliver Israel because in verse 27 it says that he has a covenant with them. You know what a covenant is, don't you? A covenant is a binding agreement. A covenant is a testament. A covenant is a contract that somebody signed that said that they would fulfill their obligation. A covenant is a promise. God will deliver Israel because God promised them that he will deliver Israel. You still waiting to shout. The text tells us that the God that both you and I serve is a covenant keeping God. that he's gone away to prepare a place for you. You can shout about it because the text says he's a covenant keeping God. Uh, if God promised you something, you can take it to the bank as the old people say because God is a covenant 
keep it going. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. Said God will deliver Israel. How do you know that? Because he made a covenant with him. Wow. Let me get out your way. A couple of months ago, I was excited because I enrolled back in the college that I attended. When I rode back into college, I tell you, despite all the scholarships and financial aid that I received, there was still some money that needed to be paid to the college. So what they did was they said, we offer payment plans. I had to get a payment plan because I don't make as much money as y'all make. <laughs> I said, I'm interested in payment plan. They told me the payment plan and they said, uh, this is what you have to put down. And after you put this down, this is what you'll pay for so many months. I looked at the payment plan that they proposed and I said, this is what I'll do. They said, you agree to it? I said, yes. They said, sign right here. I signed my name on the plan saying that this is what I'm going to do. I entered into a covenant with them. But if the light bill gets too hot, then I might have to tell the college, I know I signed an agreement, but we might have to do something different this month. But aren't you glad that God is not like us? salvation to both you and I, making them enemies of God, but the reason that God has not cast them away 
is because of the agreement that he made with their fathers. Israel's fathers specifically are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God made a promise with Abraham. He turned around and reassured that promise to Jacob, to Isaac. Then he turned around and reassured that promise to Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are holding on to the promise that God made to them. And their offspring have to inherit it because God in the Bible says is irrevocable. He says the gifts which is a synonym to the word grace. He says the grace of God and the calling of God are irrevocable. You know what irrevocable means? Irrevocable means that God is not repenting. It means that God will not change his mind. Do, do you know what irrevocable means? It means that God, once he has made his mind up to do something, that's exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> I thought I'd have a witness there. I'm glad I brought my own numbers. Chapter number 23, somewhere around verse number 19, there, the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should change his mind. If God said he's going to do something, that's exactly what he's going to do. God is obligated to deliver Israel because he has a covenant with Israel and he will not change his mind. promised us that because we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that there is an eternal resting place for us and despite our flaws and our weaknesses uh, despite our ups and despite our downs because God is a covenant keeping God he will look past our faults if we just hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll see every last one of our needs. He's not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should change his mind. God will deliver Israel because God is obligated to Israel. Here's what I've been trying to get to all morning. Not only should you thank God for Israel because God will deliver Israel from judgment. And not only should you thank God for Israel because God is obligated to deliver Israel from judgment. But ultimately, here is why you should thank God for Israel. Because God delivered the world. I've been trying to get here all morning. All right, all right. I've been saving my boys all morning just for this part right here. Yeah. I've been trying not to sweat all morning just so I can get right here. <laughs> you should thank God for Israel because God yeah. delivered the world right. through Israel. Yeah. Verses 30, right. 31, and 32. Paul explains how all of humankind came to experience deliverance from judgment. Do you see it? Paul says, but just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have been shown mercy because of their disobedience, so these also now have been disobedient 
that because of the mercy shown to you, they also may now be shown mercy. For God has shut up all in disobedience so that he can show all mercy. Just as you were once disobedient. Just as you once rejected God. God used Israel to get you right. <laughs> and now Israel has rejected Jesus Christ. So now God wants to use you to get Israel right. <laughs> okay, you, 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 you got to feel the tension of the text. Israel, God used Israel to get you right. Now, God wants to use you to get Israel right. <laughs> Can I help you with that? Uh, my mother, uh, she, uh, she used to whoop us. Oh, she used to whoop us. Oh, have mercy. But she ended up getting sick. And um, she used to whoop across the Lot. She got a lot of them. I ain't gonna tell you why. She just got a lot. So God, uh, so my mother would whoop Roslyn to get her right. But then when Roslyn got up in age and my mother got sick, my mother passed the torch. She gave the stick to Roslyn and she told her that I got you right and now you need to get your brothers right. <laughs> Sense, ladies and gentlemen, that's what God has done right here for both you and I. God used Israel's disobedience to get us right, and God wants to use our obedience to get Israel right. We have been shown mercy. Just as you have been shown mercy, shown mercy simply means you have received undeserved forgiveness. <laughs> this is another reason that you shouldn't exalt yourself above Israel. Because what Israel needs is what you receive. You received undeserved forgiveness, and Israel needs undeserved forgiveness. They need mercy and grace. They need what both you and I have received from God. God. Deliver the world through Israel. John 3.16. You know it. I know it. John there declares how the world or how God delivered the world through Israel. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The reason that's important is because God gave his son through Israel. He gave his son through a person by the name of Mary who was espoused to a man
Because God delivered the world through Israel. That's a song that I love to hear. The title of this song is simply, I'm Free. It's the lyrics that I love. The songwriter says, I'm free. I'm free. Thank the Lord, I'm free. He goes on to say, I'm no longer bound. <laughs> there are no more chains holding me. I love it because he said, my soul is resting. It, it, it is just a blessing. He got happy and said, thank the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm free. I know what you're asking. How in the world did he become free? Can I tell you? That was a baby that came down off his throne in heaven and wrapped himself in the uterus of a virgin by the name of men. He stayed in that uterus not alone once. He came out that uterus a wild and baby born, but he grew up a soul saving man. He walked the seashores of Jerusalem. He made blind men see it.